today we are going to discuss the most important topic which is known as activation function and today i will demonstrate all possible kind of activation functions that are used for ANN or any kind of deep neural network design so what is this activation function is all about see activation functions are a critical part of the design of neural network we have already discussed this concept in the previous class but whenever we are talking about an activation function in a neural network it defines how the weighted sum that is we were calculating that is weight into input another weight into another input so this is known as weighted sum right so activation function in neural network defines how the weighted sum in the input is transformed into an output from a node right so this is the main concept so whenever we are talking about input layer with some neurons so we have the concept of weights and inputs right and whenever it is going through the hidden layer and finally we will get some output in the neuron of the output layer so activation function basically deals with transferring this weighted sum from one node to another node so this is the basic concept now a network may have three types of layer that is input layer that take the raw input from some particular domain to hidden layer and hidden layer that takes the input from another layer and pass it to the output layer and output layer basically makes the prediction so this is the very basic concept of neural network now first we will talk about activation function means how we can define this activation function in hidden layer then i move on to the activation function defined on the output layer so first focus on the hidden layer means how this activation functions are designed in the hidden layer so there are perhaps three activation function you can consider or you can find the first one is known as rectified linear activation which is also known as ReLU, ReLU activation. The second kind of activation you may find that is logistic or it is also known as sigmoid activation. And the third activation is known as hyperbolic tangent or you can consider it as tan H activation function, right? So we will start from the this rectified linear activation function and how we can design all this activation functions in our code. So what is our intention that is whenever we are writing any neural network code in the previous class I have discussed that while writing the neural network designing code whenever you are designing the concept of activation function in the code this part can be modified depending on your prediction requirement means what kind of prediction you are going to do according to the need of that prediction you can change this concept of activation function also we can change this activation function depending on what kind of neural network we are using means whether we are using feed forward neural network whether we are using convolution neural network so here my point is depending on the network architecture the type of activation function will differ so in the first part of the training session we will discuss how to design this part means how to design this segment of the code where we can write our own python code in order to create the activation function according to our need 
So let's start with this ReLU function. What is this ReLU function and how we can write this code? Now consider this coding one by one. I'm just showing it to you. See, you may find one piece of code over here. In this code, what I have designed. So in this code, I have designed the activation function, which is known as ReLU function. But how I have designed this code before that, I want to tell you what is the formula of writing ReLU function. So what is this ReLU function is all about? See, ReLU function calculates max, maximum of 0.0, .0 and x, where x is considered as input. It means what? It means that if your input value x is negative, then the value 0.0, .0 is returned, means the actual functionality of ReLU function is whenever you have got two values, it will give you an output of maximum of these two numbers. So whenever your input is negative, it will give you zero. So this is the functionality. Now the thing you have to understand whenever we are going to design the activation function in Python, we have to write function. So how these codes will look like? First, you need one library. Which library? You need PyPlot library, which is coming from matplotlib. So, you need this code from matplotlib. You have to import one library, which is known as PyPlot. So, this part is common. Then, you have to define one function in order to design your own activation function. So how you can write function in Python for that purpose, you have to write def. Def is the keyword and then you can write any function name, say rectified. That is a ReLU function and then you have to specify the input. Say here our input is X. So this act as an argument and then you have to use one colon. Afterwards, you have to write return keyword and then you can write the function means for ReLU, it will return the maximum between these two numbers. So whenever you are writing any other activation function, then the only thing you have to change is the formula. The rest of the part will be same. And then what you can do at this point of time, you can generate randomly some inputs means how you can generate random inputs you can use a loop loop means say x x is within a range of say minus 10 to 10 so any arbitrary range you can use in order to generate some random input and then accordingly you can calculate the output and then you can plot the activation function so first you have to use pyplot this library function and then you have to define the activation function and then you can design the range of your input and accordingly you can calculate the output and you can plot the function. So see here. So here what we have done here say this is the pyplot which is imported from matplotlib and here I have designed one function which is known as rectified function and the max of 0.0 comma x is returned and then I have designed inputs. Inputs means it's an arbitrary range minus 10 to 10. You can take any range according to your problem formulation and then I have created the output means output is calculated and then I have plotted the activation function within that specified range and this is how the activation function will look like right so when using the relu function for hidden layer just remember one point there is one concept which is known as he normal or he uniform weight initialization so it's a kind of concept so whenever you are using ReLU activation function, in the previous class I have discussed that you have to assign the weights randomly. So 
whenever you are using relu at that point of time instead of assigning weights randomly people prefer to use he normalization or he uniform concept so it is a weight initialization concept right so this is the other part i'm not going into that details so, so this is how you can design relu function for your own code so what you have to do whatever neural network code i have designed and the first day you can change the activation function from sigmoid to relu in that specific code only just writing this numbers of code now the next activation function is known as sigmoid activation function see as i have stated the basic formulation is same means first you use pyplot and then you just have to write a function where you can calculate the functionality of the sigmoid function see sigmoid activation function is calculated as 1 divided by 1.0 plus exponential of minus x that is this is a mathematical constant see which is based on natural exponential calculation so the function here what it is doing here this function takes any real value as input and output values are ranges between 0 to 1 so here the concept is larger the input means if the input is more positive the closer the output value will be closer to 1 means if your input value is positive then we can expect that whatever output we are getting using this activation function it will be closer to one and we can say that on the other hand if the input value is more negative then the output value expected will be closer to 0, 0.0 so this is the concept of activation function and what i have done i haven't modified this portion I have borrowed this portion from the previous section. Here I have just created the range of inputs and outputs and I have plotted the sigmoid function. See, sigmoid function, see it looked like S. That's why it is known as sigmoid function, right? So this is another activation function. And after sigmoid function, what activation function we will choose to use? That is hyperbolic tangent activation function. That is this one now see the hyperbolic tangent activation function which is also referred as tanh function which is very similar to the previous shape see it is also similar to sigmoid function the shape of the function is just similar to this one right what it does whenever you are dealing with hyperbolic tanh function what will happen so this function will take any real value as input and output value which ranges between minus 1 to 1. So whenever I was talking about sigmoid function, it was ranging between 0 to 1. But here the range is minus 1 to 1. And here you have to remember one point, larger the input means if your input is more positive, the closer your output will be means the output will be nearer to 1. Alternatively, more negative input means your output will be closer to minus 1. So this thing you have to keep in mind. So in case of sigmoid function, more negative input means it is closer to 0. But in case of hyperbolic tangent function, more negative input means it is closer to minus 1. And the formula of tan h is this one. And if you execute this code, and then you will get this kind of shape. So now, immediately after doing this thing, so what we are discussing, so the hyperbolic tangent function and the sigmoid function that we are talking about, all activation functions can be applied in the hidden layer. Right? So this thing we can implement for our code. But here there is one question that is how to choose a hidden layer activation function means which activation function we should select. So now there is no straightforward answer. So whenever it is asked that say you have one neural network definitely you will have one hidden layer then how you can choose 
particular activation function because you have many activation functions so you can say that that it depends on the architecture so what is the meaning i am giving you a very small chart and i am just giving this chart from my experience that whenever we are talking about neural network say we have many kinds of neural network that is say multi layer perceptron that we were talking about then we have convolution neural network which is used as cnn it is very popular neural network which is used for deep learning image processing and we have another class of deep learning neural network which is known as recurrent neural network now whenever we are dealing with multi layer perceptron neural network then the activation function which is used in hidden layer that is relu activation cnn prefer to use again relu activation however whenever we are dealing with recurrent neural network it prefers to use sigmoid or sometimes it prefer to use tanage depending on what is the purpose of this neural network means what it is going to predict so depending on the prediction objective the activation function chosen by the recurrent neural network varies from either sigmoid function to tanage function so you have to remember this chart so this is not a fixed rule but i can see that since i have done several projects so from my experience i can give you this chart so here the conclusion is the type of activation function for a hidden layer for a certain neural network totally depends on architecture and sometimes it depends on the objective of the prediction or the type of prediction by the neural network right now as i have stated that we can use activation function in the hidden layer also we can use the activation function for the output layer so what is this output layer doing so this is input layer this is hidden layer and then we have one output layer and we have fully connected neural network right so now the output layer is the layer in the neural network model that directly outputs the prediction so from this section we are getting the prediction directly so all feed forward neural network model have an output layer so there are perhaps in this section you can use three kinds of activation functions and they are known as linear activation function then second one is logistic or you can say that sigmoid activation function and the third type of activation function is known as softmax activation function see in the output layer there is a less chance of using this tanage activation function right so this thing you have to keep in mind so whatever types i am giving this types are applied on output layer that is the neuron which is used in the output layer so now what is this linear output activation function again i will use the same concept see the linear activation function will look like this and here this is the formulation of the linear activation function so that linear activation function which is also known as identity or no activation function so identity activation function no activation function it is same as linear activation function so you have to keep in mind and it will look like this so running this example what it will calculate it will calculate the output for the range value and creates a plot input versus output so it is just a input versus output plot that is we can see this diagonal line kind of shape where inputs are plotted against identical outputs right so target values used to train a model with a linear activation function in the output layer are typically scaled prior to modeling means using some normalization or some kind of transformation is used so it's a simple thing input versus output 
and we can also use sigmoid activation function and we can also use another kind of activation function sigmoid function i have already discussed the shape but see what is our actual topic of discussion today see there is another activation function which is new thing which is applied to the output layer that is known as softmax activation function and now if you see the output of this softmax activation function you will not be able to understand anything so here my point is today we are going to discuss what is the actual logic behind this softmax activation function and why we are getting this kind of output 0.09 and there is 0.66 so to understand this thing we have to understand two or three more topics so the most important activation function is softmax function which is used in the output neuron of a particular neural network architecture and now we have to focus on understanding this softmax function because they are not so easy to understand.